All right, hello guys. This is Alan recording another comprehensive Magic the Gathering Arena draft video. I haven't done any premier drafts already. I have enough gems to fire it off, and um, yeah, I think human bot. I mean, human drafts are better than bots since the bots don't really um, pass you too many signals um, usually in draft, and uh, they can be a little bit awkward since they um, uh, don't really take picks that benefit from an archetype too much. And sometimes it's so open doing bot drafts. For example, red blue spells that you just get sick and tired of drafting it. Um, yeah, human drafts are a little bit more exciting. I haven't recorded a video with the human drafts yet, um, and the payoffs are just definitely a lot higher. I would like to get to mythic at the end of this month, so um, if I'm able to put some content out there and um, show myself climbing to mythic, that um, can really help some of these uh, help some of you. Um, learn this format when it comes to drafting there's a lot of content out there already but um i haven't done a premiere draft yet and uh so this should be really fun so uh let's uh get this going i wish we actually face against the same pod that should be pretty fun um like in real life but we'll see we'll see what the signals are um what we end up doing um always gotta keep in mind in draft sometimes you gotta abandon your first pick as crazy as it seems um, and then hope like your um, if you hope that the first pick that you abandon um, doesn't punish you too much since maybe like your the archetype that you are settled in in the pack one that doesn't fit the first pick can reward you with the second from the second and third pack but overall let's get this started um, let's open that uh, Xenoflare or Vivian and maybe Kogla um, but I'm quite familiar with this set. I know the archetypes to aim for. Um, and um, yeah, it, this definitely rewards you for playing a linear strategy. Since when you look at a card in this set, they're mostly like gold color cards. Um, and it's a set that really rewards you for knowing the archetype, not necessarily the color preference. Um, the last guy is AFK, so I guess we might have to uh, restart this um, table. Or he's ready. Alright, let's get this started. Pack one, pick one. Uh, Runa's ultimatum is good, but ultimatums are hard to draft around. I think Flame Spill beats Essence Scatter. Between Essence Scatter and Fire Prophecy, maybe I'd lean towards Fire Prophecy. The reason why is Fire Prophecy can just allow you to loot, um, and that's really nice. Um, it's also uh, a color in one of the best archetypes, the red-white uh, cycling deck. So I think I like Fire Prophecy over Essence Scatter, but I like Flame Spill over Fire Prophecy. Flame Spill doesn't hit, help you loot, but the extra one damage can matter. Also, the extra damage from the Flame Spill can matter, since uh, it might help you kill an opponent um, with the final points of damage. Um, so I like the Flame Spill here um, as my first pick, also quite splashable card. Um, so these are the best three cards in the pack. There's an okay Cavern Whisper. Not a big fan of the Insatiable Hemophage. You don't usually want to mutate with this. It's just a four man three three Death Touch, since the effect doesn't um, isn't too powerful. So I'll take a Flame Spill here. Hopefully that ruinous only main wheels. Ooh, Sterix. Yeah, Sterix is the bomb. It's close to one of the best uncommons in this set. And uh, yeah, I don't mind like maybe drafting uh, like maybe a red green Trample deck. Or we can end up splashing one of these cards. Um, I definitely want to play Sterics in a heavy mutate deck, that's for sure. And maybe we can splash this flame, flame spill. Red wants you to be either cycling or spells, so it might not be advisable to splash the Sterics since there's not a lot of mutate synergy. So I don't mind taking Sterics here. This card is definitely very powerful. Just being able to peel permanents from the top of your library constantly can uh, sometimes just steal a game. So definitely the right choice here. Nothing else amazing. Ooh, Kinnon. Oh, wow. I guess we can splash red and go teamer. Kinnon's definitely very good. It's a good reason to be in a green-blue uh, mutate deck. Although, it doesn't have any mutate synergy. I mean, um, just in the late game, if you're able to activate this, you can basically win by um, putting a bunch of creatures onto the battlefield. So definitely the pick here. Other great picks include the Boon and Spell Eater Wolverine, or Snare Tactician if I want to move into cycling. Um... And uh, if we didn't take Kid in here, it would be pretty uh, interesting to see what I'd pick. Probably the Boon. I'm a big fan of the Blue-Red Spells deck. Flame Spell is really good in that set, in that archetype. But Recycling is also pretty good, so it would be a pretty interesting debate between these two. Maybe Snare Tactician because it's more important and is the best common. But uh, Kinnan looks good with Auspicious Sterics. 
We're going to draft a um, blue green mutate deck splashing for, for flame spill. And um, I guess there's another good human here, being the humble naturalist. Um, for ramp, I mean, I do don't mind the ramp, especially if it can help give you discounts for the mutate. Uh, reconnaissance missions better if you have a lot of flyers. Thieving otters has been an overperformer as well. If I want to keep myself open in blue red spells and still good in the blue green mutate tech, but I think the humble naturalist is just a little bit more important in these types of decks, um, especially if it helps you ramp and uh, cast the. Um, Mutate for cheaper. Hopefully we can pick up some cards like, I don't know, the uh, Exuberant Wolf Bear that can make this into a 4-4 and attack nicely. It also helps you uh, splash for another creature color, but a Humble Naturalist it is. Fertilid looks fine. There's a Marmoset for the Cycling deck. I'm not going to move out of my way into another archetype with the Auspicious Sterix and Kinnon, so I think I'm going to stick with Cycling and, I mean, not Cycling, Blue Green Mutate since um, Fertilid is a pretty nice mutate targets if you mutate onto this you can have a large creature and the opponent tries to use removal you can just activate the fertile lid to uh get some lands and help thin out your deck so i think it's a clear choice here ram through best green common seeing it late makes me happy so it shows that green is open um there's also an evolving walls that can help us splash for flame spill not big fan of the sanctuary smasher it's better than like red white um cycling um, where you can actually end up casting this sometimes to actually become a real creature. But overall, I've been unimpressed by this card. Um, I think I'll take a ram through here. Hopefully pick up some large creatures. Of one mind being late is shows a promising, a promising signal with both Humble Naturals and Kitten. It should be pretty strong since it can be cast for one and we're just going to combine a bunch of uh, humans and non-humans together. So clear and easy of one mind here. Ooh, wolf bear versus ram through. I think it has to be the wolf bear here, given that we have humble naturals and kin on. Ram through would be a distant second. It just just has so much synergy and upside in our deck. A four mana four four is still very good. Um, Swift wire clips can help us splash for the flame spill. Um, ram through would be as a better card than exuberant wolf bear, but in this scenario, I think we take the exuberant wolf bear. And uh, since it goes well to Humble Naturalist and the Kinnon, now easy Rugged Highlands. Frostfall Ambush can be for cycling, but there's no cycling synergies in the Blue-Green Mutate deck. It's usually just a dead card. Um, there's Cavern Whisper if you want to splash black for some Mutate synergy, which is uh, which helps. But I don't mind gambling on this Flame Spill and helping a splash in red. We can maybe be in like a Teamer deck, splashing for, I don't know, maybe a Quartzwood Crasher or a um, Cloud Piercer. Raking Claws, maybe... Don't think I'm ever flashing in a Cunning Knight Bonder in these blue-green mutate decks. Um, Bristling Board's okay. I don't mind it. Sometimes you can, uh, it can be an okay 4-drop filler. Not a big fan of the Wingful Terran, but you could play it. Dark Bargain, sure. Um, Anticipate, sure. Survivor's Bond. Um, I mean, there's a chance we could be in, like, Sotai mutate. Like, I mean, we can go green-black, splashing blue, um... With the reanimator stuff or blue green splashing black. Um, here I think is an easy um, primal empathy. Grim Dancer is also pretty good. Pack one, pick one, it would be close between these two. Also, Farfinder is good, but I really can't pass up on a primal, primal empathy if we're going to a, into a blue green uh, mutate deck. I think it's enough better than the Fire, Fire, Farfinder that I'm going to take it, even though this solidifies our red splash or black splash or whatnot. I think Primal Empathy just makes sense here since we are looking to be blue-green with the Kinnon. Could splash Kinnon since it's more of a late game card anyways. Like if we end up in uh, green-black, we can splash Kinnon, but there's no need to risk it here. Just stay on color, stay on theme. And this could be a nice card draw engine. And a way to enhance our creatures. So pretty happy with this draft so far. Um, I think we are really navigating it really well. Um... I'm very happy with the Exuberant Wolf Bear here to help pump our Humble Naturals and Kinnon. Um, ooh, well, that's a nice payoff. <laughs> well, it's not often that you uh, get past a broken uh, Mythic. I guess one of us, one of the opponents is drafting um, Cycling from our side, so you're just forcing a deck. So I like how this balances out. Um, otherwise, I think Ivy Elemental and Furlid are close. Or even Glimmer Bell. Glimmer Bell is a good mutate target, but... Uh, Godzilla is very good. We can even bl splash black for it. Yep, space Godzilla. Yeah, let's. Uh, this is more of like a six drop since we're mostly looking to mutate with it. 
There's another of one mine. Ooh, there's a rumbling rock slide we can splash for. Neutralize is okay. We can still cycle it or keep it up, but I think this is looking to be like a creature tap out deck. Um, it doesn't really have synergy to Humble Naturalist that we're looking to just mostly tap out and play our big creatures. We're not really looking to um, cycle, so to speak. Rumbling Rock Slide can help with the red splash that we're planning to do. There's a chance we could end up splashing black instead, so I don't know how deep we want to go the Rumbling Rock Slide. The Ove One Mine is actually pretty good too, but we have Primal Empathy already and another Ove One Mine for card draw. Go take the Dual Land, but Rumbling Rock Slide is the best card in this pack. So I don't mind gambling on the red splash. It can be pretty good, especially with like Furlids to get our lands here and there. So we'll take it. We'll gamble on the red splash and Essence Scatter. Definitely one of the best blue commons in this whole entire set. I wouldn't mind splashing for a Cloud Piercer for Mutate or Glimmer Bell. Glimmer Bell is a nice Mutate target um, for two mana. We don't have too much Mutate so far, so hopefully we pick up some later. Um, so I'm pretty happy so far of an Essence Scatter. Showing late. Ooh, Parcel Beast. Yeah, Blue Green Mutate is uh, definitely paying off. Um, <laughs> seeing this uh, late in the pack makes me very happy. Happy that uh, I took the kid on early. So uh, definitely cutting it off. Otherwise, an Almighty Brushwag would be an excellent Mutate creature. But not going to take over Parcel Beast. Take a Sunken Humble Naturalist to help us ramp and maybe cast some uh, other Mutate cards. Not going to take a Frostlings over Essence Scatter. Essence Scatter is just too good. Even though I did say we are a tap-out deck, um, Essence Scatter is still very good in uh, creature-heavy decks since it's very cheap to cast. You can uh, pay the creature costs with the Humble Naturalist and keep up Essence Scatter. Blue and green mana sometimes. So uh, Essence Scatter seems good. Late Ultimatum as well. Another of one mine. Could take a Sun Spirit Rets, but I think this is... Um, this is just going to be um, a best out of one, so we don't really care about the sideboard. Even though we can be weak to flyers, this is still like um, a combat trick, so you can get blown out with it. Um, so I think we take the of one mine here. Makes sense. I hate this glitch. Look at this dumb glitch. Okay, Cloud Piercer, we can splash for it. Um, we even have a um, Naturalist to help us out. Also, late Slitter Wisp here. Glimmer Bell is excellent. Yeah, so this deck is looking out very well. With double over one my I think we just need to improve our mana base. The Thornwood Falls is great, since we're looking to splash red. This stupid uh, glitch. Um, not splashing for Frenzy Raptor. There's a chance sometimes Dwarf can work. I don't know. This is a late coil bug. I should be hate drafting in the real life pod. But this is good. I like the red splash that we're going for. Um, again, like I rather sometimes splash black with a Borrow Quartz um, Godzilla, but in a Mutate deck. I think we're looking to mostly mutate here. Uh, there's a chance we could um, end up splashing black at the end of the day anyway, since sometimes you want to grind this, put this in the graveyard with like a dark bargain and uh, mutate it from your graveyard, but who knows? Maybe we can discard it with a Cloud Piercer. So we'll see. And ooh, well, Trumpling Nars is excellent. It's the best card in this pack. This draft is definitely very insane. Um, the. Uh, Abzan mutate we're not really going for even though it is an archetype in the set sometimes you um, open up like the some black white mutate cards and you, you want to splash some green into it I don't know we'll take a trumpling nar I think it's a clear choice um, another primal em empathy I think we take the migratory grain horn I think we have enough card advantage we don't need a primal empathy this is just an important card in these uh, blue green mutate decks to help us splash hit our land drops etc in terms of cheap mutate creatures, we only have like a Glimmer Bell, Furlid, and maybe Gnar right now. So could use like an Essence Symbiote. Symbiote, we have a lot of mutate, but not enough mutate payoffs. Another Ram Through looks solid. Not going to take it over and evolve. I guess I'll take it over and evolving wild since uh, on color removal is very important. We have some large creatures that can help us fight at instant speed. Otherwise, I wouldn't mind in evolving wilds over like migration path. There's also Lake Cub Warden, but I'm not going to hard splash this. Uh, for single white, um, and the mutate cost requires single um, double white, so a ram through makes sense. Stay on theme, stay on color. And another essence scatter. Do we need a third one? We already have a furlit, but there's also thieving otter as a good mutate target. It's good with trample. Um, it's not good unless you can give it flying, I guess. Again, we only have a glimmer bell. We have furlit. Um, maybe like trumping nar to mutate onto. Could use a decent 3-drop to mutate onto, but Essence Scatter is really good. 
Yeah, I'll take an Essence Scatter. I don't think we're playing Bristling Boar. It doesn't look great. Uh, well, another Great Horn versus Ram Through. We might not, with all these Ram Throughs, we might not even do a Red Splash, a Heavy Red Splash. Um, I think we have Triple Essence Scatter already. Maybe we just need to improve our mana base. We're at least 23 playables right now. Um, improving the mana base can be pretty nice with these Migratory Great Horns, although we have one already. May just take a ram through. Maybe we can cut a red card and um, lower the splash. Late, back for more. That should not be happening, but we'll take a trumping nar. No one likes green in this seat. I guess uh, well, we got rewarded with all these powerful payoffs now. Hate draft the inspired ultimatum, so no one can cast it in this pod. Glimmer Bell looks good. Greater Sandworm is good if we have back for more, but we're not that direction. I'm I'm happy with second Glimmer Bell is a good mutate target, especially in this deck. Maybe we cast Adventurous Impulse. Not going to play the Turtle. Maybe just take the Stormwind Capitor for gems. I think we have a decent number of early Mutate. I don't mind just casting the um, Trumping Nars on the 3. So it's more like even Migration Path can help us splash and ramp. Don't know how heavy we are ramping um, in this deck. Like We're happy to just cast the Trumping Nars on 3 and Mutate onto them. We don't need to Mutate them exactly on 5. Guess I accidentally put an exuberant wolf bear into the sideboard. I think we want to cut the uh, bristling boar here, and we should have 27 cards. Maybe we can just ditch the migration path. I don't think we're ramping again. I think I think our highest curve is like six and five, so we're not really looking to ramp. We're just looking to uh, mutate and go off. In this case, I might cut cut a humble naturalist, um, jungle hollow. Do I want to play? Triple Duel. I mean, there's a chance I might want to just cast the ball Quartz Godzilla without the uh, Mutate, but Duel Lands can punish us, especially if we're looking to be in, like, a tap-out deck. So this draft is really sweet. Um, now, the difficult portion is making our cuts. I think we can cut a Survivor's Bond. In terms of removal and interaction, we have Triple Essence Scatter, Triple Ram Through, so removal is looking very solid. Um... We have these creatures on three. Could cut in of one mine, but it's very good in this type of deck. Flame Spill and Rumbling Rock Slide we're splashing for. Um, so how is this deck going to look? These are definitely two drops. Kin I might or might not play on two, but it's very good in this deck. Um, so these are three drops, including Primal Empathy. Migratory Great Horns more of like a card you mutate on two sometimes. This is a three drop. Do I actually cut a land in this deck? As crazy as it seems, maybe we do. This is a 4-drop. I think I'm actually splashing for a Cloud Piercer, given um, given that we are we do want to have as many mutate as possible, and we are splashing the red. Um, hopefully it doesn't mess up our mana base. Let's move everything back to the side here. What's with these stupid lag spikes? It's just messing up this draft sometimes, causing all these... Um, glitches. I like the Parcel Beast with the Glimmer Bell. It's a really nice combo. You can just constantly untap and tap it. It's also really nice to give like a Cloud Piercer flying, maybe like Migratory Great Horn flying. So I guess our curve is going to look kind of something like this, maybe. And in this case, do we really want to go 17 lands? Um, um, Humble Naturalist can't really fix for our Red Splash, um, except the Cloud Piercer. Um, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 targets to mutate on too early. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 mutate creatures. I think the Cloud Piercer needs to be in this deck. Actually, the, there's just Wolfare. Why, why is this Wolfare not here? As crazy as it seems, maybe we can run away with 16 lands here. Um, I think we have enough cards to mutate onto. We might not care about casting this Bio Quartz Space Godzilla, but the Jungle Hall still fixes for green, so I think we it's still fine playing it. Um, put in a Mountain for sure for the Great Horn to fetch up. I don't I don't think I'm gonna go out of my way to uh, splash a um, splash a Mountain. So how mana intensive are we? We're not really looking to get to our fours too quickly. Like, our curve is really just around three, I think. And with double humble naturalist, I think we can get away with 16 lands. 
so 7, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, Rumbling Rock Slide and Splash and the Flame Spill are really good splash colors. Um, it can be awkward if we don't have enough mountains, though. Um, so now what? I like the Triple Essence Scatter to Triple Ram Through. Could maybe cut the Flame Spill, maybe, since it might be a little bit too deep with the Red Splash. Like, we already have Ram, Triple Ram Through, Essence Scatter, and Rumbling Rock Slide as removal spells. So, and the Humble Naturalist doesn't even fix for the Flame Spill. And um, how many sources? One, two, three, four. Four sources with a two red splash can be better. So maybe I just cut the Flame Spill and just call it a day. Um, I like the Double Oath One Mine with the Humble Naturalist. Um, the Primal Empathy also serves as a card draw machine and engine for this deck. But um, it's a nice way to kind of grow our creatures. Um, I think the double of one mine makes sense with all these humans and non-humans just to kind of dig through our deck. Um, and with triple run, uh, ram through, triple essence scatter, and of one mine, I think, and a rocks, I think our, um, I think our, um, removal is, um, already really good in this deck. Um, so we don't need to get out of our way to splash like a flame spill here, I think. Since um, sometimes just having too many of your third color can mess up the mana base. So now looking at the deck, what are we? What's our mana situation looking like? Slightly favoring green, but we're actually pretty even. So we have five, six, seven, eight green sources, seven, eight blue sources, and uh, two red sources. Plus Great Horn and uh, Furlid can help us fix. And I think this is a 16 land deck, if I'm not mistaken. Our curve is not really high. With the Humble Naturals, we can ramp these 4-drops out pretty nicely. Um, it also um, gives, it also works for Mutate, so that's not bad. Um, double Humble Naturals, Fertilis, and Fertilage, uh, Fertile Lid, and Great Horn really helps us ramp. So we can definitely go down a land. Um, I'm definitely not going down 15. That's a little bit too insane. Um... So, yeah, um, this should be pretty fun. Am I missing out on anything? 7, 8, that's 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 lands. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 uh, potential mutators. So, Sterix can actually go off in this type of deck. Um, even Trumping Gnar. I think the mutate is good. And then the Trumping Gnar and the Furlid and the Glimmer Bells can be like early mutate targets. Sometimes we can mutate on the exuberant wolf bear but i hopefully we don't um so yeah i think this is good i think the rumbling rock slime beats the flame spill since it can deal do a lot do a lot more damage uh in the later games if you have a lot of lands sometimes yeah just dealing the extra seven damage is better um although this is instant speed um i think the rumbling rock slide outweighs it in a sense so, looking at the sideboard, do we need a migratory path? Not really. Don't really want to pay four mana to get two lands. We're not really ramping into anything. I know it cycles, but with all this fixing early, we don't really need to uh, spend four mana to, to fix. Bristling Boar is too expensive. It trades down. We don't really want to four drop the trades down into, like, I don't know, a uh, Savai Thundertooth um, or trades into a three drop, so that's not good. Um, we're not really trying to reanimate anything to get back from the graveyard. Borrow Quartz Godzilla can uh, happily just mutate onto something really easily. Um, there's also just a debate between, again, the Flame Spill and which one is better, the Flame Spill or the Rumbling Rock Slide. Flame Spill is, again, instant speed. It is three mana, but what difference does that make? Um, sometimes the Rock Slide can kill something bigger, and that's more important. The damage, the extra damage could matter, I don't know, um, I mean, this is more of, I guess, a sideboard preference, like, if you, um, end up in a facing against a deck with smaller creatures, the flame spill is better, but if you end up in a deck facing against big creatures, the rumbling rock slide is better, um, I think the rums, rumbling rock slide is again better, because, like, if you look at our removal, our ram through has limitations, since we do need a big creature, in the on battlefield to fight first. Sometimes it can be awkward since we only have three power on the battlefield, um, and therefore we can only deal with small small threats. 
while the Rumbling Rock Slide can deal with something bigger. So we'll see. Um, there's a chance Flame Smoke can actually be better. Maybe it does the extra damage that we need to kill the opponent. Maybe Instant Speed is just um, better sometimes. Um, if the opponent tries their own stupid ram through tricks. Um, I don't know. Maybe Flame Smoke is better. Like 3 mana is a big difference. And Instant Speed is a difference. So sure, why not? Maybe we'll try something like this. Um, but yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm convinced it's so 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2 red sources, and we're we're actually playing the Jungle Hall in case we want to cast Bile Quartz Space Godzilla. So yeah, we'll try this deck out, uh, it looks very fun, um, and let's get going. And uh, yeah, this draft was really navigated uh, quite well, that early Kinon just solidified me into the blue-green mutate deck, and um, we, we're... And um, I'm so happy with all the cards being passed up. Um, and that's what you get for um, being good at drafting. You find the open lane. You take all the powerful payoffs. Um, and you get heavily rewarded in, uh, in, in this scenario we just did. So um, I think the only weakness our deck might be is against Flyers. But we do have removal to mm -hmm. answer them. And again, I think Flamespill might just be better. Like, overall, in a vacuum, in a pack would pick one, I would prefer to Flamespill over the Rumbling Rock Slide anyways. Like, sometimes the 3 mana does make a difference. Having instant speed interaction does make a difference. So yeah, I guess having the Flamespill is better than the Rumbling Rock Slide. Um, and again, I don't want to get too heavy into my Red Splash. Otherwise, um, the um, deck is going to face some issues, and I don't want to go full 3-color teamer. Unless I open a Quartzwood Crasher, okay, so it's not bad, we can play a dual land, we're on the play, play an island, play a Humble Naturalist, maybe play out the Trumpling Gnar, and then if we pick up more lands, our Godzilla can eventually mutate and get some value, so sure, why not, let's keep this. This should be pretty fun, we have our nice bombs to begin with, and I'll play the Humble Naturalist first, in case we pick up a land, it can be pretty nice since we can like... Play Glimmer Bell and uh, keep up Essence Scatter. Quill Bug, that's not going to do much. No lands here, hmm. so I guess we just cast Trumping Nar since we can't keep up Essence Scatter. And uh, if we do get like a fourth land, we can play the land, mutate on a Trumping Nar, get a 3 3, and um, that can be pretty nice. Dusk Fan Mentor can start growing this. So that's a bit of an issue. Um, Dual land is not something we need. I think I'll keep up uh, mana for Essence Scatter here. Next turn I have 4 mana. I can't really mutate Bar Quartz Godzilla and get, unless I get a land. Or the Auspicious Sterix. I could just tap out now. Like, I guess I can also mutate Cloud Piercer onto it. This is close. I could just offer to trade here and attack. But he's most likely... Huh, I don't know. Maybe play out the Glimmer Bell. Yeah, we'll play it out. I think it might be important here. I can offer a trade, I guess. But he can just attack and activate. But that's going to use up his whole turn. I don't really want this to grow. But maybe it's not right since this card is just too powerful. It takes two mana to activate, so I guess he can play a two drop and activate the Coil Bug at instant speed. Um, sure, Fire Prophecy, that's a good one. And then he can start growing this Coil Bug. Not very good, so um, at least if we get our lands, we can uh, mutate Brokos. But he has a life linking durable coil bug. Hopefully, a ram through can answer it. Guess I can mutate the Cloud Piercer, discard um, the Essence Scatter to essentially hit our land drops. No land. Do I attack? I, I don't mind attacking. I don't really want to trade for a coil bug here. And he could have removal. That can be pretty annoying too. Next turn we can cast Kinon and also um, keep up Essence Scatter. I don't really want to mutate Godzilla into a 5-3 that's already um, doing a whole lot. Okay. Sure. Yeah, this is pretty annoying. Um, I guess Essence Scar can go at this point. 
I think we're just going to be in a tap out game plan for now. Wolf Bear is good. I guess this sets up a good double block. So I guess I cast it and stay back. Removal will be pretty bad here, but I think we go for this. Um, since I don't really see myself winning this race. Missing the lands is really bad. I mean, I think I go for this block here. I mean, otherwise I don't think we're winning. He can pump, but that's fine. It's a risk I'm willing to take. Alright, wait, waiting to see the Blood Curdle here. Okay, he could just pump and then use, like, I don't know, like a combat trick. Yeah, that's bad. Bad news. Um, yeah, I guess this Dustbang Mentor just ran away the game. But at least our Wolf Bear survives. This is really awful. Guess we can still take six, attack with the exuberant wolf bear. Because I don't plan on blocking anyways. Game punished for not hitting our land drops, but that's what happens sometimes. I mean, even in a 16 land deck, this happens. Even in a 17 land deck, you can get mana screwed pretty badly. But I, how do I deal with this? I think... I don't think Flame Spill can deal with this. Even Rumbling Rock Slide is pretty bad against this, so. There's a chance I need to maybe mutate the Sterics to um, essentially do something here. Hemophage is annoying, so you can get a nice 2 for 1 against me. I think I have to discard the Sterics since I don't, I'm not going to get enough lands to um, cast it. I guess I can cast an of one mine now, maybe go for like a triple block. Parcel Beast can be fine. Maybe I just cast Primal Empathy. So if he attacks, what happens is it's going to become a 7-7. Seven, seven. I essentially need to throw three creatures in front of it. Four, five, six, seven. I don't really want to lose my Parcel Beast. Um, if I play the Primal Empathy... Wait, this works with creature spells. I don't know how this is. This works. I guess I can try to cast it. Oh, I guess the Kinnon gives it the uh, discount. So I guess I'm triple blocking here. Maybe losing uh, both Kinnon and Wolf Bear, but I have to do this. Otherwise, I'm not going to win. And he might just spare the Liber Bell for me to, uh, to essentially um, start using the parcel beast on. I have to do this, otherwise I'm not winning. I guess I'm losing everything, never mind, but so maybe, it wasn't even right to cast parcel beast, I think, so I guess this is first strike, so I think I'm wrong about that too. Let's just concede. I'm not going to win this. The first strike and the lifelink was just so brutal here. And I guess missing the land drop was just the most brutal aspect of this draft, so... Hey, we got our Fertilid, we got our Migratory Great Horn. We should be fine, and that hand I kept was uh, still pretty good, so just get unlucky sometimes. So I don't think there was any outs, even if I. Maybe if I, maybe if I got land, that would have been great. I could have maybe used my Sterics to start building a board. But the Death Touch and the uh, First Strike um, and the Menace was just something I can't deal with. So yeah, Dusk Fan Mentor definitely very good. Um, this opponent really stole the game from us. Hopefully we can uh, get some wins because with this deck because it's definitely very good and sweet. Hopefully we don't get curved out like that again, the two drop into the life linker. And then getting our trumping nar blown out. Okay, this is fine. We do need red mana for the flame spill, but I can keep up an S I can um, turn two, keep up essence scatter, maybe draw a card with the of one mine. Okay, I guess we'll be taking one damage per turn. I might even just fire off this essence scatter since I'm looking to tap out in these couple of turns. And that's a good target for me to counter, so. Glimmer Bell. 
Next turn, I guess I can play Glimmer Bell, mutate onto it, and start drawing cards, but the Ove One Mine might just be it, since I need to dig deeper to hit my land drops. I'm not going to mutate onto the Glimmer Bell yet, but I'm going to keep it back as a good blocker. Yeah, let's do that, and then we can hold off the Helica Glider. Um, I can always just mutate uh, Parcel Beast onto it now. But that's a bit of a risk. I might just block here to prevent damage. Of course, he could have like a dead weight. I don't know. Maybe it was best to mutate onto this. He could have removal. He could have anything at this point. Maybe he's willing to just stay back here. Dead weight. Mutual destruction. Wow. Mutual destruction on the Glimmer Bell. So I'm glad that I didn't um, play the Parcel Beast, but there we have it. But I guess the Parcel Beast can now block pretty nicely, and we can start activating it now. So I'm, I'm going to play the Rugged Highlands, because we could have access to Flame Spill, cast the Parcel Beast, and then next turn we can we can use this as a blocker and start um, going off of it. Hopefully no more removal spells, but he does, they always have it. But I can still activate the Parcel Beast, so that's not bad. So I can take 5 here, um, activate the Parcel Beast main phase maybe. Just activate now since I can't block. Trumping Nar. Trumping Nar is pretty good. Do I just cast a Trumping Nar? Maybe I just do. Yeah, I don't mind just casting it here. Might, might disincentivize an attack from the ground. Um, and then we can play land and uh, say go. And then I can flame spill the flyer. Sure. Do, want, do I want to keep a flame spill? That's another good question. Coil bug, I can hold everything off here. Um, empathy is good, um, but I think I'm just going to activate the Parcel Beast first. It's because this is essentially just drawing a card for the most part, so it's very good. Keep a flame spill, maybe. Maybe just flame spill now. I don't really want to take all this damage. So I guess I can play out land, play out the Fertilid, keep up Flame Spill. That's not bad. And I can even trade if I need to. So uh, we'll stay, we'll stay go. I mean, I could just use it now. Yeah, I'll just Flame Spill now. Because if I do it on his turn, he could have like a fight as one, and he can uh, attack me for three. While if I do a main phase here, it's better. Might just take two from this. Coil bug and then start activating the Fertilid. Vantasaur, okay, that's a good attacker. I can still block with the Fertilid and activate, so that's actually pretty decent as well. Okay, so Trumping Gnar into Trumping Gnar. I can also just activate the um, Parcel Beast. So, Pacifism is a good removal spell, but sometimes scenarios like this happen where you are essentially just forced to. Um, Essentially forced to, um, what am I doing? I guess I can just make a bunch of 3-3s. Three I could have mutate on the Fertilis, a good blocker, but I don't mind trading um, a beast away for this imposing Vantasaur. Maybe I should mutate on the Fertilis, I don't know. It would have blocked the 3-6 pretty nicely. And uh, the last, the draft didn't show too much black for me to splash anyways, um, so the teamer was definitely the right call. This deck could have used a gust of wind, that would have been pretty nice, maybe a capture sphere as well. But um, yeah, this is good, Humble Naturalist, um, with a Trumping Gnar, and an of one mine, we should be able to dig through our deck pretty nicely. Sad that we are on the draw, so um, that can be an issue. So I can turn 3, cast Trumping Gnar, and cast of one mine. That should be pretty fun. 
make sure I tap my humble naturalist, of course. Um, ram through is good. We'll cast the humble naturalist. Next turn, we're just gonna cast the trumpeting nar, use the humble naturalist as mana, and then cast the one mana oven mine. <sighs> this is basically a free roll. I think I do it because he could have the um, the two mana. Um, I guess dead weight here. Okay. Well, I guess it's not. I can still cast a trumping nar, so that's not bad. Glimmer bell. Huh. This is close. Maybe I just cast a glimmer bell. If he attacks with a baby Godzilla next turn, I'm going to be quite confused. Um, like I can double spell next turn if I cast a trumping nar. So I think I actually he could have an essence scatter. Maybe just draw two cards. Yeah, off one mine seems fine. I don't really want to run into an essence scatter here, and I can always play double glimmer bell if he attacks with an octopus and tries to draw here. Okay, he could have the octopus here that he flashes in and draw a card. He doesn't. Okay, dead weight wasn't bad. I mean. We do need to answer to Steric Stone. Um, do we have an answer to it? Not really. But we can um, maybe go wide and ambush it. Yeah, this Steric is just going to run off of the game. The first, I guess, these both these opponents are pretty difficult to deal with. Wasn't lucky in the first game, the opponent had an insane, um, okay, I guess he just wants to attack me for a million. Yeah, this sucks, our opponents are very good. Now this locks me down, I don't have access to my mana. Guess I can just take the hit here and jump block next turn. Yep. This is unfortunate. Um, first game lost because I missed the land drop, and now this game I lost because um, the opponent just curved out like a beast. I don't really feel good about this since I'm this deck is supposed to actually overperform. Maybe I shouldn't have blocked for the humble naturalist. Got my trumping nar out earlier, but there was a chance he could have had the flash octopus, and that would have connected and drew him a card. So maybe the block was correct. So even in a great draft like this, you can lose. I guess that's part of the experience sometimes. Alright, who's on the play, who's on the draw? Opponent goes first, but we have all our mana. Hmm. I don't mind this. Kinon on two can be okay. And then we have all our mana, we're on the draw. Maybe we can cast a Parcel Beast on four and start... Activating it if it survives. I'll go for it. Tap land is always great to have in the opening hand as well. Punk goes down the card, so that's a good sign. Okay, so I'm not really scared of anything here. He could be hiding. Ooh. Maybe Glimmer Bell is just better, and I can mutate my Parcel Beast on it and start using it. That's really nice. Um, I think I'll go for it next turn. Um, if he attacks, do I block? Not really, because he does nothing really to mutate onto um, with this. I could just block, actually, yeah. I would be fine. He could be keeping up mana. I mean, this is a lot of mana he's keeping up. He could be keeping up a Pouncing Shore Shark. But what else do I do? Maybe I just bait with Kinon. And bait resolves, so I guess I can. I'm free to attack. Okay, I guess he's just gonna pass here. He might just be. I don't know. Sea Dash or Octopus. I guess I'm. I don't mind trading now. Or I can use Ram Through on it next turn. I don't really want him drawing cards. Go for the block. Okay, that was good. If he mutated with a Pouncing Shore Shock, I would have been pretty mad. 
But maybe Shark, yeah, the Shark could have just bounced to Glimmer Bell and just got in there, but now I can just go off with the Parcel Beast. Or I can just casting Zuber and Wolf Bear. He didn't have it last turn, so I think I'll go for it this, this time. I mean, it is an important card. He didn't go for it, so I think I'm just going to go mutate onto it. Maybe he was just baiting me here. Yeah, he was baiting me. This is so dumb. I could just maybe cast the Wolf Bear now. Guess I can attack and always untap with the Glimmer Bell, so I'm going to attack one for one. Not very happy with the results here. He tried to ambush me with the Sea Dasher I traded my kin on. But I still have some pretty decent bombs in this. So I think I'm going to untap my Glimmer Bell here and then just block one of the um, Humble Naturalist. He might just be doing this to see if I have an SS Scatter too. Alright, let's see if this works. Do you have another counter spell? Okay, that resolves, that's good. Attacking for one in the air. Opponent's playing the Soul Time Mutate deck. These are my most powerful Simic creatures here. So I'm unhappy that I've actually um, did this, but now I guess I can ram through this, get some value. Yeah, let's ram through. I, the land comes in tapped anyways, so I'm fine just doing this. And then we'll get in for 5, and then we can untap the Glimmer Bell to save some damage. If he mutates or plays something big, I'm going to be in trouble. Yeah, let's untap here. We don't even have an essence scatter. I'm not going to bluff it. Does he have a removal spell here? Charge of a Great Worm. Okay, I guess he needs one more mana to uh, go off of it. So it might be right to actually flame spill this humble naturalist or yeah it might be correct i think we do it so he doesn't he can't cast his giant sandworm we need to make sure he doesn't cast it for seven otherwise he can just run away with the game okay he just needs one more mana i guess next turn we can mutate the migratory great horn and actually uh do something here. Hmm, that's a good card. But maybe Great Horn is more important. Mutating isn't bad. I mean, I still get a th I still get a three three, and then if I mutate the Great Horn onto it, that can be even better. So let's go for it. And the opponent only has like two cards in hand, so I'm fine just doing this. And we can connect in for three in the air. Next turn we can mutate a Migratory Great Horn over it and then make another 3-3, so that's also pretty nice. Now he can finally cast it. Another Glimmer Bell, okay. But I think this time we just mutate here. Find our second green source. Cast our Glimmer Bell, attacking for three in the air. I guess we can maybe outswarm the opponent. I'm happy taking seven, and then we can just go for an all-out attack, even with double ram through. Yep, alright, that was nice. At least we didn't get uh, swept. So, two and two. Hopefully we get more um, games like that. Actually, I didn't really want all that to happen since I got my Parcel Beast counter. That could have ran away with the game. Um, if I tapped out for the Wolf Bear instead. So, always gotta keep in mind that the opponent might just be bluffing with blue mana. Always play around the uh, Dreaded Essence Scatter since it's the best blue common in this set. Alright, this is not bad. Prima Empathy can be pretty good. I can cast Trumping Gnar. Um, I think this is okay. I probably need to cast the creature first in order to um, have a ram through in case I need to need, need to have access to it. 
It could be bad if I don't pick up a creature and I have these primal em this primal empathy in my hand. But I'm happy having both of these duels up. Does he tap out here? Dranif Stinger, okay. Ooh, Humble Naturalist. Hmm. Do I want to cast a Naturalist instead? Naturalist plus Gnar can be really good. Like, if I play the Naturalist next turn and cast Gnar, I can get an Ove One Mine for free. Otherwise, I could just cast a Gnar and um, cast a Humble Naturalist next turn. Like, if I cast this for two and then next turn I can pay three and pay one, that can be pretty good. But I guess it's almost the same thing, so I guess we'd rather be mana efficient, or, hmm, or should we? Let's say he has a removal spell. I'd rather just have my Humble Naturalist removed then, so let's just play it safe. The question is, do I block if he attacks? I think I do. Um, otherwise he gets a free roll. But maybe he could have like a combat trick like Raking Claws. I still think I block against a cycling deck because like he can cycle a million times and just kill me with the Zenith Flare that I hate so much in this set. Okay, that's a good sign. So we can ram through this if we pick up another land, I guess. Cloud Piercer. But um, let's tap our mana efficiently here. And I guess we can cast enough one mine for one mana, so this is really nice value. I could still take double strike from this and then ram through later, but uh, we'll see here. Hopefully he doesn't have like a removal spell on this. I have access to double ram through so I can kill both creatures and clear a path if he decides to tap out. Definitely not blocking, he can cycle three times if he wants, he can waste his whole turn. But that's only once. Hopefully he ta taps out for a snare tactician. Do I attack for three? Pro okay, that's good. So, definitely going to ram through twice here. Um, let's see. I could also just tap out for the exuberant wolf bear. Or I can just ram through once. Or ram through twice is really nice. The wolf bear does block the... Um, I could cast my Primal Empathy and just ram through the Snare Tactician. Or the 3-2. Actually, I can't since um, this is not a creature spell. So I guess I'm pay four, keep up one mana, or I can just mutate for five and get a five four. Nah, let's just let's just kill him now. I mean, like, what am I doing here? This is a waste of time. Why am I even debating against this? Both of them just need to die, and then we just need again for three, and then use a trumping nar to um, kill a swallow hole. So I should also be careful, but 3 is definitely pretty solid here. Guess we'll stay back. I'm not... I'm, I'm afraid of Swallow Hole. That's just a dumb card. He can just exile my creature once um, it's tapped. So it was definitely maybe correct just using Double Ram Through on these quality creatures that he played. Next turn we can maybe drop a Cloud Piercer, ditch a land. That can be correct. Or we can play Exuberant Wolf Bear and into Ram Through. <laughs> Snare Tactician, okay, we can ram through it. Um, hmm, Kinon ram through. Maybe we just do Cloud Piercer ram through. Ram through Wolf Bear. Maybe Kinon ram through is better. Maybe we just do it now since uh, opponent only has one mana up. He can cycle, sure, who cares. That's fine, tap it down. Then we can cast Kinon. Get rid of these snare tacticians before they tap down our big creatures, so. We're definitely going off. Would love a land, though. Eventually, I can. I guess. Mm, whenever you 
tapping non land permanent for mana. So this thing add one type, one mana of any type that permanent produced. That's really nice. So I guess I have six mana open. Um, if I get an extra land, I should have seven mana so I can mutate Cloud Piercer and play the uh, Primal Empathy. That should be pretty fun. I don't think I want to um, discard a card. So he's just going to ping me here. I'm just going to block with the Humble Naturalist, perhaps. But we're definitely doing a good job just killing off all these threats with the uh, ram throughs that we have. Again, the opponent could have like a Fire Prophecy up. He might just use on Kinnon here. I'm fine if he does. Maybe Trumping Nar. We'll see. Opponent's, I guess the opponent's just debating like what he wants to use it on. I'm happy if he uses on Kinnon since I can mutate the Cloud Piercer next turn anyways. So this is 5 mana with Kinnon and the Humble Naturalist. Whenever I tap a non-land permanent mana, add 1 mana of any type that permanent produce. I don't know if it only affects creatures or non-creatures. Sure, kill the Trumpling Gnar, I don't mind it. We can always mutate the Cloud Piercer. Okay, that's good. Um, that's actually what I prefer since it's going to take us a long time to get to 7 anyways. And now the Cloud Piercer can really punish the opponent for choosing the wrong target. But both creatures anyways were scary. Let's block. I can mutate for 4 mana anyways. Hmm, I could play Wolf Bear and Prama Empathy. Nah, let's just mutate now. Get our value while we can. Discard the land. Dig through the deck. Get in there for five. Make those trumping nars. Hopefully, it doesn't have Xena Flare, but we are playing defense very well. We prevented a lot of damage. We can start going in with these, um, this Cloud Piercer and uh, Beast. Next turn, we could, if we have a land, we can uh, tap out for the Exuberant Wolf Bear and then keep up Essence Scatter up. That should be fun. Primal Empathy hasn't been used all too much in these matchups. So, opponent might be just looking to um, ping me to death here. Um, that's annoying, so maybe Wolf Bear can trade. I think we just be as mana efficient as possible here. Play the Wolf Bear. And I'm fine getting in with both, or one. I mean, this is a lot of damage. Yeah, let's get in there. We're not cowards. If he wants to double block Cloud Piercer, that's fine. Opponent might be scared of another ram through that I have, but I'm holding nothing. Okay. The Exuberant Wolf Bear can hold back the Dranif Stinger. And I could just trade the Exuberant Wolf Bear, but I guess if I don't, I can swing out with all, but he should have these Dranif Stingers on chump block duty. He can eat a free token, that can be pretty annoying. Maybe I don't trade for the Wolf Bear since I can make this into a 4-4 next turn, and that can be really good for me. Depends on it, where or not he blocks or not. Okay, so he's double blocking, that's fine. I'm happy to trade for a Stinger. Get the blocker out of the way, keep up my Essence Scatter. Could just take 5 next turn, we can just swing with everyone. Force them to chump block. And then all my creatures will have uh, 4 power and 4 toughness with the Exuberant Wolf Bear. Okay, that can go. Good game. Now 
now we just cast everything. Faster Glimmer Bell. Attack with all, make a 4 4 human. Don't think the opponent can claw back from this life total. And then we're just going to draw two cards for Turn of the Primal Empathy. So, yeah, um, we definitely got this. Um, usually I'm scared of cycling decks due to um, cards like the um, Xena Flare, but from this life total, we definitely aren't going to die. Could just chump with the Glimmer Bell in case he has a stupid Xena Flare. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 6 damage with Xena Flare, but he doesn't have it, so. Currently three and two. This deck is very good. Um, I guess I can just save it for my records. Maybe wanted to face against someone with it. All right. Two more wins, and we. I guess I can maybe make up my gems. And I can, and I can, and I can settle with these uh, two embarrassing losses. What do we have here? Turn two essence scar glimmer bell. Not amazing, but we're on the play. We do need red mana for the cloud piercer. This hand is not all that great. But I'll risk it. Ooh, that's good. Okay. Now we're talking. I'm fine playing out the... Using mana to play the Glimmer Bell next turn. And then um, keeping up Essence Scatter. So Black Green uh, Reanimator, perhaps? Ooh, that's a good one. But I think we um, use the blue mana for the Glimmer Bell here. Do I want to mutate Parcel Beast? That might just be too... Um, too desperate since he could have like a heartless act so I think it's best to um, keep myself um, from doing anything stupid here and that's pretty nice since I can use parcel beast to um, ooh, the great horn is also very good again he could be holding up heartless act but Parcel Beast mutating for 2 is very strong and keeping up Essence Scatter. So I think we're going to go for it. I could get punished. But we can still cast the Great Horn either way. And we can tap in response if he just tries, tries to kill us. And we'll pass our turn, keep up Essence Scatter. Removal will be pretty bad if he had an, has a Heartless Act. Um, to use on this. I guess the tap land's good sign. Blood Curdle is not available, so we can just start going off with this Parcel Beast. Charge. Okay, we'll just use it now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh my god, oops. Damn, that's stupid. Yeah, that's fucking stupid. Ah. Uh. Okay, I, this is dumb. I shouldn't... I messed this one up. Yeah, I could have gotten a card off of this. This is really dumb. Um, yeah, we'll just cast Great Horn now. I might just lose now because of that stupid misclick. Um, but at least I can save the Essence Scatter for um, the Greater Sandworm. Furl is like whatever. I can ram through and kill it, I guess. Yeah, I'm not very happy here. But Godzilla is a fine mutate target. He could have Essence Scatter up. But, nice, I can get a land at least. I messed this one up really badly. Man, I could have gotten an extra card from that Parcel Beast. What the hell was I thinking? Untapping the Glimmer Bell? But now, I can start... I don't have to mutate anymore since um, I do want to have a. Uh, I want to be able to um, get the Bob Quartz Godzilla back again. He could have, like, back for more to ambush me. 
next turn. Um, that can be pretty annoying. Could have it. We'll see. Could have gotten an extra card. This would have made a difference. The stupid... I was dumb enough to just click too fast there. Untapping of the Glimmer Bell was so dumb. Uh, could have had an extra land, an extra card in my hand. I could have uh, been good in this matchup. And now the opponent is getting all his lands. He could have, again, like the... Um, what's the card? Um, the... Sure, I guess I can still attack onto it. If he uses a trick, I'm going to use Ram Through against it. Does he have a Heartless Act? A dead weight? Okay. Well, the Sterix is very good, but I can't mutate onto it. Guess I can still attack, and if I lose the Godzilla, I can just, just cast a Cloud Piercer. Or I can just cast a Cloud Piercer, in fact. And what happens if I mutate on the Godzilla? I can get an extra land. I do have 6 mana to mutate this Sterix on top of the uh, Godzilla. Maybe that's the play. I could be wrong. Let's do it. I'm fine if it wants to activate this, it does shrink down the Migratory Great Horn. And now Kinon, I can start activating to find my permanents. Um, I do want to kill off my own Steric Stone to get back to Godzilla. So we'll see. Exiled one as in Scar and of one mine, so that's not a big deal. Could have like I don't know the uh, the reanimator spell back for more. He probably has it since he's um, hovering hovering over his graveyard. And in that case, I don't mind if he kills it since okay, Blitz Leech is fine. I guess that can not really. That's gonna kill the uh, auspicious Derex here. I mean the our card. Guess I can mutate the Cloud Piercer and that should be okay. Let's just do it. I mean, it is pretty fun. Let's tap for it. Then our deck. Discard. Yeah, I don't mind attacking here because if he blocks and kills it, then uh, then I still I can get back my Godzilla. Okay, that's fine. He can counter, but I can just keep making it again. And if I mutate on the exuberant wolf bear, then I can. Um, sure, that's a good one. I guess I can still untap with the uh, Godzilla, anyways, with the, since it's a glimmer bell, so that's not as bad as I think it is. I can chump block with the Humble Naturalist, so that's fine. Alright, we're gonna take 8. We can, um, we can, uh, untap this Bow Quartz and attack him for 6. And just do it now.
keep land in hand in case he has a mutate. Looking to thin out his deck, that's fine. I can also just block with the Humble Naturalist next turn and then kill it with Space Godzilla, if possible. We'll see. Does he have back for more? I really don't want him to back for more me. But I guess that's not bad since I can still... Um, that's a good one, but it can't... It doesn't have haste. So I'm still happy about this. Hopefully his last card isn't a removal spell, because we need to get rid of this Archipelago. Okay, we'll Essence Scatter. Okay, so yeah, um, I didn't play that game too well. Um, that Parcel Beast play really, um, really tilted me, so just don't click too fast. Since I could have at least gotten a card off of it. But I still won that game, so just got to be careful next time. The Steric's really going off with the um, the um, the other card was really good. And now we have enough gems to do another Premier Draft if we screw up. Okay, ooh, this isn't bad. Uh, just gotta get our red mana. I mean, I guess I can tap out on three with the of one mind. Draw some cards, hopefully I get there. But um, Essence Scatter isn't bad. We can always use it late game. We can always use it to counter an annoying two drop from the opponent. Weaponize, that's a good one. Do I care? I don't know. We'll just play our lands to go. At least Trumping Nar survives the Weaponize, so I'm quite happy about that. That's an annoying card, let's get rid of it. Ooh, hmm. Huh, maybe I just play out the Of One Mine, just to hit my land drops. Like, I would like to play Nar, but I have nothing that mutates on 4, so it's important to just hit my land drops, I think. The Checkpoint Officer is annoying, since that can um, start tapping down my big creatures. So I guess opponent's playing like white black sacrifice with a splash of weaponized, or he's just playing some weird red deck here. I don't know. Just cast a trumping gnar. Take two, and then we can maybe mutate the Godzilla on top of it. That should be pretty fun. Make a bunch of three threes. And the opponent might be forced to outrace us. Lockdown, okay. Definitely not blocking here, so now what? Hmm. Ram through is pretty nice. Could just ram through. We can always ram through later, but he's all tapped out. Ram through plus trumping nar. That's actually not bad too. Let's just do that. Let's just ram through and trumping nar here, and then we have two excellent mutate targets to choose from next turn if he deals with one of them. So this is a nice way to diversify. Zerda. Zerda is a good card. And Checkpoint Officer. Do I just mutate the Auspicious Sterix onto it? I guess it's 6 mana to mutate, so I guess Godzilla makes sense here. And then we have another Trumping Nar that allows us to... Um, Well, two weaponize is a little bit too much if you don't have the tokens to sack him, so um, I'm not a big fan of 
having two of them. He, he seemed to have an interesting like white red sack deck, which I'm not a big fan of since black is usually the token generator in this set. Um, it's like with the night squad commandos, maybe has like day squad marshals, but yeah, his deck was a little bit weird. But um, well, at least we um, made back our gems, 16k. Maybe we can get to seven wins. With the first two losses, um, so reverse sweep incoming. Even with a game where I misplayed with the clicking. Alright, well, Trumping Nars on 3 are always great, uh, dual land, um, I don't mind like casting this on 5, so let's do it. We're on the draw I think, so, okay, hopefully it's nothing scary, he peels, gotta be careful, I'm always scared of um, my opponents. Um, that's a good card, ooh, yeah, I guess we need to find a red man to answer it, otherwise I don't know if we can win this. No white mana, please. Okay, now he has white mana. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit difficult. The Luminous Broodmoth is a scary card, but I guess I have Flame Spill now that can kill it once he taps out for it. So I'm definitely going to go for the play once he taps out for the Luminous Broodmoth. Um, if he misses a land... So this is a really nice target. I can just deal to the... Forge with Broodmoth. I don't think White Green has any way of um, essentially um, countering, so I'm happy with this. We'll cast a Trumping Gnar. On turn 5, we can mutate Godzilla on top of it. Or we can just play Glimmer Bell, mutate Godzilla, but this is fine. Sure, and then hopefully he taps out since I can I have access to Flame Spill. Alright, play out your Moth, please. Play it. We just block here. No blocks. I think I'm smelling a trick. And if he doesn't, I guess I'll just... Okay, that's good. Point free rolled me, but now I have access to Flame Spill to kill it, so... Just gotta get rid of it ASAP, make sure I don't misclick. Still take one from the main servals. It, he is free rolling me, but... There is a chance he could have, like, Will of the All Hunter, or some annoying pump trick. While this is a good mutate target that I'm fine like I do I, that I do want to mutate on so land is good could just mutate now get in could still have I don't know like the um eh, we just do it now I don't even have to attack to be honest I might just attack anyways I mean I don't really want to get Godzilla exiled if he has it so maybe just draw cards or I can just mutate onto the Trumping Gnar itself. Yeah, that's actually pretty nice. Just mutate on Trumping Gnar, but I'm shields down on Essence Scatter. So that's really, really important to keep in mind. And eh, just do it. You only live once. And then I can start using these 3 3s to start attacking and keep this one back. And you might have to use 2 mana to tap it down and use the. Uh, that exile trick to swallow whole. Wish I tapped out for that, but whatever. Um, guess I can cast over one mind, keep up essence scatter, maybe double block the honey mammoth, or I can just mutate with Godzilla. I can afford to take six. It's not the end of the world. Humble well, Naturals would have been great. Just say go. I'm fine throwing two of my beasts in front of this Honey Mammoth and keeping on Essence Scatter.
I guess if I mutate on the Trumping Nara, I get even more tokens. Um, but I don't want to be shields down on Essence Scatter. If he kills this, this is going to be problematic, though. Kind of a Survivor's Bond to get back the Luminous Broodmoth as well. So, got to keep that in mind. Umori, we'll Essence Scatter that. That's a scary card. Right, Humble Naturalist of One Mind seems good here. And then, um, we can play it slow. And keep up another Essence Scatter. Blue Man is great, since I can now also cast a Glimmer Bell and keep up the Essence Scatter. Punk could have been using the Checkpoint Officer end of turn. I guess he's going to use it now. Okay, that's fine. I guess now he can get in for 6 power. I'm not going to use my Trumping Nar to, to trade for it. I think I'm fine chumping it, and that, that card can go. You don't really want to uh, him to uh, keep pumping his Vigilance guys, so... Take 6. I could also just mutate on the Glimmer Bell, since I already have another Mutator. Um, and if he does have the Swallow Hole trick, I can always untap. So let's see. Actually, hmm, I can take it slow here. I can actually just mutate um, the Migratory Greathorn. Actually, I'll use my Humble Naturalist to tap for mana. Mutate over it. And I can just make a bunch of 3-3s. Three Get a land. And I can also mutate a Parcel Beast on my Glimmer Bell, untap it, and keep drawing cards with it. So this is really nice. The question now is do I attack? Probably not, since I do want my 3 3s to keep back this Honey Mammoth. And we can play like a slow, grindy game. So. Guess I can always attack with the Parcel Beast, untap it, and and use it, so let's move the attacks, let's see what he does. And I might mutate the Godzilla onto the Quartz, the, um, the Parcel Beast, since if I'm able to untap with it, it can definitely dodge. Well, I guess that ruins it, so... At least get a card out of it. Does he have another Divine Arrow? He doesn't have a great attack with the Honey Mammoth. I just need a Ram Through, I think, with the Godzilla, and I should be good. I can get rid of his Honey Mammoth and just swing in with all. I just hope this doesn't get exiled. Like, if he has a Blade Banish, that's going to be pretty bad. So I might hold on to this Godzilla and wait for something else. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go for the Quad Block here. He could have another Divine Arrow. I think I just need to uh, throw as much as I can in front of it so it dies. That's fine. Now I can start attacking pass. I can start attacking. I can start attacking past this opponent. Oh, he has another Honey Mammoth. Okay. Okay, let's just go for it here. Okay, no Blade Banish, please.
if he trades, I can just get back. So I'm happy that he did this. And I can always ambush next turn with the Space Godzilla, so we'll say go. I don't have to mutate. Um, yeah, I don't really have to mutate. I think I can just go for an attack here. And he's not using it, okay. Since mutate can kind of give a signal. Um, he could have the um, Will of the All Hunter trick here, the one that gives two counters. But I guess not. And we're thinning our deck with the Migratory Great Horn, so I'm, I'm in good shape here. Sure, I don't really care. I'm not going to tap it for mana. Take one, sure. And I guess you can now... I mean, it's an extra point of damage. Could matter. Ram through, okay, hmm. That's not bad. I could just mutate Godzilla because since he has trample, force him to tap, and then um, I can ram through in response maybe against something. Hopefully, there's no blade banish. If there's a blade banish, I guess I'm going to use the ram through on the checkpoint officer. This is quite annoying. Yeah, he has it. Maybe I should ram through on the main servo here. We still have a lot of playables. Alright, nice. Okay. Well, that was close. Maybe I should ram through on the main servo. I mean, he could start tapping my stuff down, but he wouldn't have an extra blocker. Like, sometimes that cat can maybe grow. If it gained a couple of counters, that would have been pretty bad for me, since I wouldn't be able to attack past it, and that would buy him enough time to find his playables. But, yeah, that, that match, um, I was expecting the Blade Banish. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's add this to our collection. Um, let's take a nice snapshot of this. And uh, hopefully we get the final boss. Um, this deck is uh, pretty sweet. Um, I, w I was really paid off for taking the kin on early. Again, in terms of our interactions, we are playing a uh, triple ram through, triple essence scatter, a flame spill over the rumbling rock slide, double of one mine with all these humans. It it's pretty powerful. Um, um, we're playing 16 lands since our curve is particularly low. Um, not splashing for the extra rumbling rock slide because I think flame spill is again better and instant speed removal is more important. And if we get too deep into our splash, we could run into the issue of having a red card in our opening hand and having no way to cast it. So yeah, um, let's take the picture, use this as our thumbnail, and uh, let's move on to the final boss. This is actually more like more like more or less our curve, I think. Like this is a six drop, this is a five drop, this is a four drop, this is more like I guess like a two drop. Kinon is like late game anyways. You want to activate him in the late game. I mean, I guess he's still a 2-drop, since if you can pull him out on 2 and attack with an exuberant wolf bear, that can be good. Didn't see a Fertilid this game yet. Um, I think I saw all the other cards, except Fertilid. So, while you're doing Fertilid, you're hiding from me. I need you exactly to uh, help me wrap and splash. Uh, did I add it already? Let's add it again. Yep, final boss. Let's get this 7 wins. This deck definitely deserves 7. We have to reverse sweep our way from the... First two games I think we lost. 
since the opponents were pretty deep. One of the uh, blue-green opponents were playing raising cards too. So let's fully concentrate here. Um, is this a good hand? Double Glimmer Bill is an amazing. We're on the draw. It looks pretty bad. I might actually mulligan this since, I mean, all this is is just mutate fodder. I think we can do better. Humble Naturals is, is good. I think we'll keep this. And do we bomb Essence Scatter? We have, we're running three Essence Scatter, so I don't think we need all this. And uh, Humble Naturalist with the Trumpling Arm can give us a nice of one mind discount, so I think we go for this. Pull also Mulligan, but he has a weaponized the monster deck, so... Ooh, that's uh, scary. Going to tap out for the Humble Naturalist. On turn three, we can... Um, On turn three, we can uh, play the Trumpling Nar plus the um, the uh, island. Do I block here? I, if I do, he could just stack the other one and kill my humble naturalist. Uh, yeah, we'll just take it. It's a little bit of a crazy attack here. Makes a guy anyways. We can ram through, but we'll do that later. I guess we'll just we're just gonna play the slow grindy game. Um, take some hits. Play these of one mine for like one mana. And we'll stay back. Bastion, okay. Um, that's scary, but at least we can at least block here and not die. Um, maybe I take out the beast in case he's running mutate in these decks. Since you have a million humans already. But he can definitely drain me out here. Guess I can tap out for the wolf bear, but let's cast the one mana of one mine first. No lands, wow, no lands, that's brutal. Guess I can mutate the migratory great horn and make another 3 3 and get a red splash. And now we have a 3 4 that won't die to the weaponize unless he activates it twice. So we'll just say go. He can activate twice to clear a path. Another Bastion, okay, so this is going to be really hard. I'm definitely going to start blocking here. I think I need to Flame Spill this uh, Whisper Squad. Yeah, I think I actually have to Flame Spill this Whisper Squad so he doesn't make more tokens. Wow, hmm. Will I die here? I think I need to use double ram through here. Let's get rid of this Whisper Squad. And we probably need to take damage from these uh, Bastions. And we're dead, I guess. I think this is our only option. We just have to... Um... Yeah, we're not going to win this. Since he can just keep one back and kill us from here. Good games. Yep, final boss. Had to have it all. Um, but good good job, opponent. Double bashing and weaponize is uh, really good. So hats off to you. You are definitely a formidable final boss. But at least um, this deck got back its gems. Raised a ton of value. Um, and we definitely profit off of it. So... Had fun. Um, that's all that matters. Drafted a really nice blue-green mutate deck. I wish our first couple of opponents weren't so difficult, so we could have had an extra chance. But let's claim our prize. 18k gems is good, and uh, let's open some packs. Pack one, pick one. Let's pretend this is a Ikoria draft. Well, not a big fan of this ultimatum. Probably just park Porky Parrot. Um, if this manages to pair in with a Thieving Otter or um, Boot Nipper or Grim Dancer or any Death Touch creatures, it can just run off of the game. So you can even cycle Void Beckoner onto this since it can just be like a one mana kill something every turn, which is pretty busted. But um, yeah, I think this card has the most potential. I don't think it's broken um, and there's definitely a better first picks, but it has high upside if you can get the uh, Red Black Sack deck going. The opponent last game didn't run off of all those bastions, it would be great. Yeah, I guess another Porky Parrot isn't bad.
easy trump thing nar great card to mutate onto just generating three threes all the time um it's really powerful great in the blue green mutate deck that we drafted um all right, I guess Avian Oddity, this or Sanctuary Lockdown, probably Sanctuary Lockdown. This is a really good card in the Black White Humans deck. Just pumping all of your uh, tokens, giving them plus one, plus one is really powerful. And I'll take a Giganta. Uh, she's gotten a little bit worse as a companion, um, but it's she's definitely better than all the rest of these cards. It's still five mana, five five, but sometimes it can be okay. Maybe if you don't have a turn to play anything, you can. Cast it for sorcery speed, put in your hand and cast it for 5. Not a good use of mana, but it's an extra card sometimes in your deck. And uh, it doesn't. most of the good cards don't even have um, two mana symbols of the same color, so it's almost like a free roll. But since the companion's gotten down a bit, I wouldn't even consider it over, like, I don't know, a Fire Prophecy. Anyways, um, pretty fun draft. Um, hopefully I can upload load more Premiere Ikoria content and show you more um, interesting decks. But in the meantime, um, have a great day. Take care.